Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Capricorn for July 2014. So if Capricorn is your sun sign or your rising sign, then this is for you. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about personal readings with me. I would like very much to help you. And also, while you're there, definitely after this video, go to my website and sign up for my free email newsletter if you have not already. You will receive a free gift, but besides that, you will receive information on how you can participate for free in a multi-summit, a multi-speaker manifestation summit where dozens of speakers all over the world will assist you, including myself, will assist you with becoming the most powerful co-creator and co-creatrix in your life and you can do that for free through my email newsletter. So sign up for it and you will have the information come out when it is ready. So what's going on for Capricorn for July? First, there are two very exciting things. The first thing is that this is time, finally, to do all of those things I've been telling you to wait to do. So if you've been listening to my forecast for the last 10 months, I've been saying every month, this and this and this is retrograde, this is retrograde, retrograde, everything, go backwards, go backwards, go backwards. Now is the time to move forward. So Mercury will go direct as of July 1st, and so it takes several days for the haywireness to kind of clear up. But every day after, say, around the 4th of July through July 15th, Mercury will regain its full strength. And July 15th and after, we will be completely free of personal planets that are retrograde, so uh, Mercury, Venus, or Mars. So from July 15th through September 14th, we have a wide open window of no personal planets being retrograde where you can launch your everything new. If you've been waiting to buy a domain name, if you've been waiting to launch a website, if you've been waiting to have a um, gallery um, showing of your work, if anything that new, 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 new that you have been waiting to unveil to show to the world, this pocket of time is your best window. All this energy of going backwards and going inward and going back over and finishing and fine-tuning is now blazing forward in this open window. So this is a time that I have been very excited about. And um, if you have already launched things over the last 10 months, either if you um, couldn't help it or it was in the flow to or however it worked out, try to do some relaunching based on the information that you have received from a feedback from what you've launched already. So maybe you will revise some things and then set something up where you can have something new and exciting, some event, whether it's online or whether it's in person, something exciting and new to bring yourself and your projects and whatever you're working on out into the world. This is the window. This is the time. So on that same day, pretty much, well, July 16th, Jupiter goes into Leo. I'm a Sag, so whenever anything's going on with Jupiter, I get worked up because it's my ruling planet, and I love Jupiter. But I love it for good reason. Although every planet, every sign, every placement has a potential downside, the upsides of Jupiter are so profound. Jupiter is the great expander. It brings opportunities. It brings luck. It brings um, bigness to things. And I think it's very exciting. So for Capricorn, this expansive energy is going to move into your eighth house of deep relationship, of power, and of money. So for the entire year, between this July and July of 2015, the energy will be in this sector for you. Now if your Capricorn is at an earlier degree, whether it's your rising or your sun sign, then you'll feel some stronger attributes of that in this earlier time. If it's in the middle degrees, like between 10 and 20 degrees, you'll feel some stronger energies toward the end of 2014. And if you are late degree cap in either rising or sun, then some of these effects will be even stronger towards next summer. But they will be in effect fully for all Capricorns throughout this whole time. So you probably won't have to wait to start to see some of the manifestations. And also, there are always caveats to this. If you have a lot of planets in Leo, if you've seen your chart and you have multiple planets in Leo, then Jupiter will be making conjunctions to these planets and will be causing further expansion and some different um, expanded timelines for that. But in general, these are the things that you can look forward to. Expansion of credit. If you have been one of the people who lost your home and lost your credit score to the fiascos that we've gone through with that whole scene, 
then this year can be the year that you regain your credit and your uh, capacity to access money on credit. So loans, um, any kind of loans, student loans, loans from family, loans from friends, personal loans, private, whatever. Access to money is going to be um, more probable in your fields during this transit. This is also the house of debt. So I caution you with this newfound capacity to borrow money. Make sure that what you're borrowing the money for is going to help you make money. Okay, because that downside of Jupiter that we talked about is that it can cause you to overdo things. So you could extend your credit or extend yourself further than you actually can manage. Because of that energy that is so big, it, it makes you feel big and elated and may not, it doesn't always lend itself to reason or prudence. So you have to kind of purposely add the reason and prudence into this um, equation because it's not naturally there with the Jupiter transit. So many people will win money. You are more likely to win money in, during this transit if you're a Capricorn. You're also more likely to receive an inheritance. Inheritance is always a weird topic because we don't want to be excited about that because it means that someone's passed away. So, um, but if you have something like that pending or if someone has passed already and the money has been wrapped up, it's very likely to be freed and accessible to you with this transit. Um, also, if you are looking to deepen your relationship with your current partner or partners, romantic or business, um, or people that you work with, however, you know, if you are an empowerment coach or you empower people in any way, all of these relationships involving empowerment um, are at play here. But this relationship, this transit will help you deepen your relationships on every level. So if you have been afraid of deeper intimacy, then this transit can assist you with putting away some of those fears of stepping deeper and subsequently experiencing deeper intimacy and more fulfillment in your relationship. So this goes, like I said, on any level. If you do work where you're empowering people, whether it's financially empowering them with money, if you are a financial planner or you are involved with stocks or loans or anything, your capacity to deepen your work, to expand your work, and to go deeper with your um, client base is very pronounced during this time. Also, um, topics involving power. If you have been in power struggles, then this transit can assist you with softening the power struggles. You're less likely to put up the defenses or to react or to set yourself up for these patterns when you have this placement there. Now, of course, deep clearing of these patterns requires deep inner work, but this Jupiter transit can assist you in going deeper into your psychological structure that is creating certain patterns. So the eighth house is, besides the house is called of other people's money, like we described, um, you know, money with a partner, money with a romantic partner, a business partner, money with a bank. Um, this is also spousal money, um, but this is also the esoteric house, so the house of the unseen. I was listening to um, Deepak Chopra's Journey to the Boundless on tape, so we know it's very old because it was on tape, but the information is just as valid now as when he recorded it. And he was talking about the fact that we are mostly space. Like you see me, I'm tangible, the wall is tangible. Most of what we base things on and interact with seem to be tangible, but the tangible reality is a very tiny, 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 minuscule percentage of total reality. Your capacity to go into that space of the lesser seen things that comprise most of life, really, is very much pronounced during this Jupiter transit. So that includes psychology, that includes astrology, which is related to psychology, that includes any study that goes deep into the psyche, deep into the cosmos, deep into esoteric topics. If you have not been into, interested in esoteric topics before, having Jupiter in Leo and in your eighth house can make you interested all of a sudden. And if that's the case, you might not have support from people around you, but with this Jupiter transit, you'll be able to attract to you people who are thinking and doing and going through this 
where you can have camaraderie and support with your investigative process. Speaking of investigations, this house also rules actual investigations. So if you have been involved with um, something involving an investigative matter, then it's likely that it may come to a conclusion or you will get more information or you will get different information or the research will be somehow expanded um, during this time. There can also be legal matters that can come to um, a conclusion or a positive outcome. So a settlement, many, 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 many people will experience a big settlement through this and that can be financially or it can be just energetically where you're winning, feeling like you're winning something. All of these things are potentials for this whole year and are very strongly to be thrown into this vibe in July and it's going to continue for a long time. Um, yeah, there's other stuff there. Um, well, as usual, there's way more things than I can talk about in one session or ever because it's just so complex and I can't see what's going on in your personal chart. If you'd like to see how some of these potential implications can show up for you personally besides these general uh, potentials, then I would love to do a reading for you. You can check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. This telesummit that I am a speaker in for manifesting your highest expression and becoming the most powerful manifester in your life, these are topics that are very eighth house as well. So if you're very adept at the manifestation word and topic, then great, you can go deeper by um, signing up for my free email newsletter and taking part in this multi-speaker event. Um, and if, you, if this is new to you, then this is a really, really good place to start because it's very rare that you'll have dozens of manifesting experts over the course of a couple of weeks interviewing where you can access this for free and listen to all of the tips and tools. And you can get this major download in a short amount of time, which is very representative of this super energy. It's just big. <laughs> so sign up for a free email newsletter, check out my website, call me for a session, and have a fabulous July.